you I played G.I. Joe beneath the tall pine trees And I'd fight imaginary wars Till my mom called from our back porch And I'd come home covered And that pine pitch from my head down to my knees Big to wrap my arms around Should be older than I could count Must have been there since the Mayflower across the sea They've been through the blizzards and hurricanes Summer droughts and freezing rain Vampires would live forever At least that's how it seemed to me So what's become I grew up in a suburb of Boston, um, Reading, Massachusetts, and uh, I could not wait to get out of there. <laughs> Mainly because everyone, you know, when you're growing up, you know, in a kind of manicured, sheltered sort of environment, you know, people, exasperated adults will occasionally say to you, you know, wait until you get out into the real world, you know. And so that when you grow up, you think, okay, so this is not the real world. Okay, where is it? And uh, as a young, you know, man, like m many young men before me, I just kind of figured it must be, you know, somewhere over there, you know, and behind me is the ocean, so it must be the other direction, you know, out west. And uh, so I, I kind of developed this fascination and love of the Texas songwriters, and I figured that's where all the real troubadours were. And I figured if I was going to be a real singer-songwriter, you know, I'd have to go where the real world was and write about the real world um, and uh, move, you know, someplace I'd never been before and kind of make it all up anew. They subdivided all of my fondest memories And I never became friends with the families that moved in They were different from us so it seemed I grew up and moved away And I'd just go home on holidays But those tall and tangled pines They're still falling in my dreams I didn't quite have the, the nerve to do that when I went to college So I went to college up in Maine um, Which is like, it's kind of like the Texas of New England <laughs> And uh, I would send away for these records, and I sent away for um, a record by uh, Robert O'Keefe. And uh, I still remember the day it came because in the liner notes of the record, he's wearing um, a T-shirt uh, from Bill Morrissey, a Bill Morrissey T-shirt. And Bill Morrissey was like the quintessential New England singer-songwriter. And I was a, f a fan and familiar with his work, but um, it, that was a real epiphany for me because here was a te the Texas guys, the real guys, you know, uh, idolizing the New England guys, you know, enough to put them to wear their T-shirt on their liner notes. And, and so I, it was then that I kind of realized that it's all the same stuff and it's all valid terrain for, you know, roots music. And I didn't have to go someplace I'd never been and, be, you know, become someone I wasn't and write about things I'd never seen before. I could just stay where I'd always been, where my roots were, and um, be myself, and write about the things that were around me. And uh, so I, I did, I didn't, I didn't go anywhere. I moved back down to Massachusetts, and I've lived in Maine or Massachusetts my whole life, and now I'm currently about seven miles from the house I grew up in. So uh, they say write what you know, and I'm still doing that. My name is Mark Arelli, and I'm a singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, producer, uh, sometimes bluegrass music player uh, from Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, I've been doing music as my job since uh, about 1999, about uh, 17 years now. I try and take the antenna approach to songwriting, you know, um, just try and keep the antenna up. Uh, and see what it picks up, you know, what kind of stray signals kind of come across your path. Um, 
I think my job as a songwriter, basically, um, you know, regardless of genre or the type of song I'm writing, is the wider job is to just pay attention. And, uh, you know, that's what I try and do. I try and stay open to noticing little things, you know. Like there, yesterday I walked past here and, the, and there was not a flower blooming there, or that's the first red-winged blackbird I've seen this year, or, um, you know, why is she looking at me that way when I say that to her? <laughs> you know, try and notice these things, and then, um, you know, and then it's usually just kind of processing kind of in the background of my brain until uh, it kind of, uh, I kind of sit down with a piece of paper and a, and a notebook, and, uh, and it comes out. It's a very tactile experience, and it's a, you know, I'm just trying to stay open to the world around me and notice things that maybe other people are too busy going about their day to notice. Whether it's stone I fished out from some mushy mountain stream Yellow books with dark eared pages Wildflowers pressed between Postcards from every place where I laid it down to sleep. Natural imagery is really big um, for me, um, mainly because I think for all, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, natural imagery is, is very stirring in some ways. Um, it can be very somber and very sad, or it can stir, you know, joy and happiness. And so, you know, writing about that kind of stuff um, uh, kind of shortcuts people to that emotional response, you know. And uh, I have a background as, as a, I have a master's in evolutionary biology, uh, of all things. So um, I find that that's the, those are the kinds of details that just move me the most personally and, and I find most interesting. And um, they're kind of nice, nice metaphors. For song. I catch a glimpse, a glint of something shining somewhere in the great unknown. And like a beast, I chase it over hills and mountains, valleys, rivers, cellars, calling on a scrap of paper on a bedside table in some cheap motel with highway drones. And sometimes it feels like church. Sometimes like I'm the last man on earth Just a voice Howled out into the You know, I think when you get to the middle of your life you, uh, you get into this weird place where you're, you know, young enough to remember still being really young but you're old enough to kind of be able to see, you know, what the next 40 years might hold, you know, and uh, so you get this really weird perspective uh, that I think really forces you into kind of a, a reckoning, you know, what maybe some people call it a midlife crisis, but, you know, I, it didn't feel so much like a crisis for when it happened to me, it just felt like there were a lot of questions that I was wrestling with that um, the answer to, to all of them was this, you know, for a song. Like, why am I doing this? Why do I keep chasing this? Why do I put my family through this? Why do I leave, you know? Um, why do I sit down in front of my notebook and try to create something? All the road is not your friend It's just a means to an end
All day long they shuffle through Sneakers, sandals, high heel shoes Scraps of paper, chewing gum My work here is never done They exit now in single file I sweep the floors and scrub the tile As dying echoes quiet the room And leave me leaning on my broom Above me now the fall of man But it all depends on where you stand Is he letting go of reaching out for Adam's hand Look up Look up There are angels flying low enough to see Look up is a co-write with um, a guy named Dinty Child, who is, a, is in a band called Session Americana. And uh, we wrote that song on an island in uh, Lake Winnipesaukee um, as part of a songwriter retreat that uh, this group of Boston musicians does every year. And it was, uh, I, I knew I wanted to write a song with Dinty because he usually writes these really great, um, simple, raucous kind of, uh, you know, almost barroom anthems that feel like they've been around forever, you know, and, and they feel so simple and so inevitable. So I was hoping to write one of those with him. And when he came to my cabin that day, uh, he said, you know, I want to write a song about the guy that uh, cleans the floor at the Sistine Chapel. You know, because he works in this most beautiful place in the world, but he's like looking down all the time and he has to remind himself to look up every once in a while. And I thought, Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it doesn't sound like a bar room anthem anymore, but he's like, I know you're the guy to do this with me. And uh, so we started in on it, and, and then he said, uh, you know, maybe the first verse could be about the, the janitor at the Sistine Chapel, and then the second verse can be about, you know, Michelangelo as he's painting the Sistine Chapel, and then, you know, we pull the, the frame back even further, and, you know, the last verse is, you know, sung from the pers perspective of God. This is supposed to be a vacation, <laughs> but we we worked all day on that song, and I I think I walked around the island maybe three times, you know, trying every time we got stuck. I was just not ready to let it go. I didn't know if the inspiration would come back, so we'd we'd break and I'd walk around the island again, and um, we finished that whole thing in a day and uh, changed one word. I think you know several weeks later, but uh, um, that's a I couldn't have done that without, wouldn't have even thought to do that without Dinty. So uh, my co-writer was, uh, was uh, indispensable for that. When people come out to me after shows, uh, this started happening kind of in earnest, maybe eight years ago, um, where I started noticing that people would come up to shows, uh, after shows, and, and say like, wow, you know, like, you made me cry. <laughs> and if the first few times it happened, I was like, oh, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and then it kept happening, and, uh, and I had to really, like, evaluate, like, what am I doing here? Like, am I just bringing everybody down? You know, like, the, I definitely want people to think and, and to, to feel, you know, a range of emotions, but it's, I'm also supposed to be entertaining, you know, and, and uh, so, you know, the tears kind of took me off guard um, at first, but um, eventually what I realized, I think what they were trying to say is that they were, they were just very moved, um, and that's, that's what you're trying to do as an artist, I mean, and the, the thing that you don't want is indifference, you know, for people to just sit there and, you know, golf applause at the end, you know, that's, that's no good for anyone. Um, you want people to come to your show and feel like something special has happened, like something that maybe, that couldn't have happened if they were just sitting at home on the couch watching, you know, TV. And I've seen the flags at half staff as the nation mourned and moaned. I've seen the stars and bars of flying proud above the state house dome for the Charleston night. We sing, I once was blind, but now I see. 
We can learn to live with anything When it happens by degrees And I've seen little hands on little shoulders Children in a line I've seen them led away from school As the shots rang out inside And I thought something had to change But somehow it's become routine we can learn to live with anything when it happens by degree. I don't know, I guess seven, eight years ago, that was when I had my, my boys, my first child. And um, I think once that happened, playing music and singing songs went for me from something that was fun and someday I was going to make it um, to all of a sudden there were there were things at stake like that actually mattered you know and uh, I don't know if that changed the way that I was singing at, at the time I didn't notice any seismic shift or anything like that but I think maybe it was just more of an intention where you know it felt like okay if I'm gonna do this for a living for the rest of my life then I have to kind of play for keeps you know and uh, and it was right around then that you know I started to make everybody weep. <laughs> and uh, so I, I think, you know, now that's kind of something I really, I really cherish, you know, when someone comes up and says that I've moved them at a show, you know, that's job, mission accomplished, you know, that's, that's my job. Driving home on the Mohawk Trail last night My my name was as a dry leaves in my headlights When I saw a state trooper running out on the French Cambridge Flashlights sweeping the darkness all And the river rolled through But on a moonless night The black wind howls and moans And the river moves like a serpent A hundred feet below 